I, like many of you, am on a journey to try and become a full-time mix engineer. But I was struggling with mixers for reasons that I thought I could explain, and then I had my eyes opened. I want to take you on a little journey and maybe see if you can relate to this, which might help you make some decisions to help your mixing career. Hi. I'm Ed Thorne. It's good to see you. So Paul Third and I, fellow YouTuber Paul Third, do a podcast called The Working Audio Tools. The new season is coming out this weekend. In that, we do mix comparisons where we take uh, tracks from the Produce Like a Pro Academy multi-tracks and we mix them and then we compare and we critique each other's mixes, compare mix techniques and so on. It's a fantastic learning experience for both of us and it's highlighted some problems in my journey. Now, I've been working on a set of Neumann KH120 speakers for about four years now. I'm in my studio here, which is lined on four walls with rock wool. It's been designed as a drum studio, and there's a whole bunch of shells at the back of the room designed to resonate, so it's not quite ideal for mixing, but I've done what I can. Now, Sonarworks had always helped me for a long time, and it had highlighted in my room that there was a bump in the mid-range between about 200 and 500 hertz. But Sonarworks seemed to do the heavy lifting and fix most of this, or so I thought. At some point, I decided to upgrade and get a Neumann KH750 subwoofer, which has built-in room correction DSP software. And this by far excels, exceeds over SoundID and Sonarworks, because it also helps get the phase coherence between the speakers more accurate. Now, with this in mind, something that came up in the podcast was that my mixes were always scooped with more prominent low end and more prominent top end. Now this might have been a hangover from my live sound days where it's all about kick drum and vocals, but I can't be sure, and Sonable was sometimes to the rescue hit. But throughout the process of working with Paul and our mastering engineer Marcel at Act Do Make, the feedback was that there was not enough mid range in my mixes and there was a scoop. And I was looking at the Sonable true balance curve and it was agreeing, it was always saying, there's not enough mid-range, I wasn't quite hitting the target curves. But in my room, I was hit pushing the mid-range, pushing it and pushing it, thinking this is uncomfortable, I don't like this. So I was having to rebalance the tilt and reassess the tilt. Now, I was hearing a lot of two to 400 in the room, which I assumed was the room. However, I've since found out it is the room compounded by the mid-range forward sound in the Neumann speakers. I went to Gearfest in July and had the pleasure of listening to all the Neumann speaker range and incredibly found out that all the speakers from the 80s, the 120s, the 150s, the 310s, they all have an identical sonic signature. Even the headphones sound virtually identical. Now, this is remarkable and fantastic if you're going around different speakers with different Neumann systems, you know what to get. Yes, there are differences between two-way speakers and three-way speakers. <laughs> uh, with the three-ways, you obviously get the extended low end, the wider uh, dispersion, and the more even wider listening environment. But the sonic signature is still the same. And in all of those speakers in a treated room at Gearfest at Tile Yard, I heard what I was hearing in my KH120s in my studio that I wasn't liking. And what I mean by wasn't liking, there's a, there's a woolly kind of, low mid forward sound at the frequency response that my room generates. So I think that was compounding the problem, resulting in me thinking I had more mid range in my mixes than I actually did. So they weren't translating elsewhere. Have you had a similar thing? Let me know if your mixes translate well. What speakers are you using? Why do you like them? Or are you thinking of changing? What don't you like about them? Let me know in the comments. I was second guessing mixes. I was really struggling to, to make mixed decisions. I was having to constantly go back and revise stuff. I was guessing at levels and balances. And when I was listening on different systems, I was having to make notes, right? This, change this on this speaker, this on for those speakers. Things weren't translating. And I, I'm trying to become a full-time mix engineer. Uh, I've sold a live sound business. I've reduced how many drum gigs I'm doing to push this career. So I need good monitoring. And I'm a speaker guy, I'm not necessarily a headphone guy. I reference on headphones, but, you know, Paul's the headphone mixer guy. I'm the speaker guy in the podcast, which makes for an interesting comparison with the mixers. I've recently invested money in analog gear for the studio, and I was debating getting new speakers, but I thought, you know what, it's expensive uh, to jump up because really I knew I wanted to go to about £6,000 from the £1,000 Neumanns. And I wasn't planning on doing it until I went to Gearfest. And I heard the new present day production guy's uh, Mum 8 speakers. 
is a video on those coming next because they are remarkable. Uh, the Alcons, which were incredible. I heard reverb tails in songs I didn't know existed. I heard the new PMC sixes, which are for a two way. They act and sound and disperse like a three way. Loved how they sounded. I heard all the Neumanns. I heard the Genelex. I heard some Oars burgers, which just sound like an overly loud, aggressive, shouty PA system. I wasn't, wasn't a fan. And heard some Focals. And the penny dropped that I may need some new speakers. So my question to you is, do you feel like your speakers are limiting or are you going to be banging me in the comments saying, oh, you know, a poor workman blames his tools? I understand that sentiment. I do get that. And I agree because there are incredible mix engineers working on NS10s. Fantastic. If it works for you, great. But for me, I just, I realized I wanted more fidelity in the mixes. I wanted more clarity. I, I want to be the weakest link in the chain in this system. I don't want my gear to be the weakest link in the chain. So upon hearing all these speakers, I realized it wasn't my hearing and it might not necessarily be the room. It might be the Neumanns that just aren't working for me. If this room is compounding the mid problem and I'm then thinking I'm overcompensating, but not putting enough in the mix, then there's a problem with the monitoring. So I've decided to go on a journey and try as many different speakers as I can. And there's going to be a video coming reviewing loads because I've tried ATCs, PMCs, Machinas, PSIs, Genelex, Barefoots. Uh, I'm sure there's another one in there. But I have tried speakers all the way up to about £10,000 and the results were very interesting. I've learned a lot and I'm going to share those thoughts in a future video. But if you're having issues where you're struggling to get mixers to translate, yes, things like Sound ID from Sonarworks can help but it's not always the answer. And in my experience, the Neumanns for me were a problem. I was just struggling to, to get mixes on those. I have since upgraded and my mixes are translating flawlessly and my mastering engineer has noticed a massive improvement already. So I'm happy with the decision. I'm not gonna reveal which speakers I chose because there's a little bit of a journey coming. So leave your thoughts. Are you having problems as well in your studio or am I just a fool and blaming my tools? Feel free to bin me in the comments because that kind of engagement is good for the algorithm. So you'll be actually doing me a favor. Subscribe if this kind of journey is something you're interested in. I've been Ed Thorne. It's been emotional. I'll see you on the next one where I'm gonna be interviewing the present day production YouTube channel about their decision to create a set of speakers. A link to the Working Audio Tools podcast is also in the description. Yeah.